Good evening and welcome to Woman to Woman. My name is Sandra Campbell. I would like to introduce my co-host for the evening, my co-hostesses. Starting to my far left. Hi, I'm <clears throat> Naima Latif and I'm an author of the book The Female Solution and host of the morning radio show The Female Solution which you can hear every morning 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time at www.blogtalkradio.com slash the-female-solution. Thank you, Naima. Next. And I am Jean Lockett. I am a pastor of After God's Own Heart Ministries as well as a writer. I write uh, plays as well as film, screenwriting. Thank you, Jean. And this evening our wonderful guest is Miss the Carla Turner, the yes. Carlo Turner. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. She is the author of The Forgotten Man. Please introduce yourself and tell the audience a little bit about you. Yes, good afternoon. I'm the Carlo Turner and I am the author of a book titled The Forgotten Man. And I decided to write the book simply because I believe that there are millions of men who have been the subject of male bashing and they actually don't deserve it. And that was the reason why I wrote the book. Well, thank you. Thank you. What we're going to do this afternoon, we're going to actually ask you some wonderful questions about this book. This is a very interesting book. And who better to ask these questions than the women of woman to woman? Yes, right. <laughs> now, um, I'm going to let Jean, because she's one of the most refined individuals at the table, uh, start out. Because, you know, Jean <laughs> always keeps us balanced. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> <It's fine. laughs> Go ahead. But if nothing else, uh, I first of all, I just must tell you that I was very, very fond of knowing that this book is coming out or is out, The Forgotten Man, because I really, truly believe that men are not given the props that they should have. And I was hearing you in regards to you starting off in regards to why you, you know, started why you wrote this book. Yes. But I, I want to really ask that question again, yes. and if you can, just kind of elaborate just a little bit more on yes. why. Why or what caused you to write this particular book? Well, what actually caused me to write the book was I kept hearing a lot of men having conversations with their significant others on telephones, whether I was at the gas station or whether I was uh, at the grocery store, and these men would basically be begging and pleading with these women on the phone, and these women would be screaming obscenities at them. And when the conversation would end, these men were basically, they would say something to the effect of, you know, if, if I keep going and doing what I do, I'm not going to have anything left. Or mm. they would say, no matter how much I do for this woman, it's not enough, not knowing that I was actually listening to them. And I started from that point and I said, you know, let me just see if I can just talk to a few men that I know and talk with friends of friends to find out what's going on. So what happened was I started by having conversations and just asking general questions, you know, about their relationships as, as well as their childhood and things that they felt that were important to them or, you know, why, how they felt about being uh, put in a category of just, you know, not being good men and one conversation led to another and also as a result of that I started uh, passing out questionnaires. Oh really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So how, how did you get them to answer the questionnaires or to participate? What did you do to persuade them because men usually are not that open about their relationships, good, bad, or indifferent? You're right Sandra. What happened was I passed out all the questionnaires and I told them to return the questionnaires to me however do not put their names on them. Oh, so, so may remain anonymous. Exactly, okay, remain okay. anonymous, is, which is what I mentioned in the book because the names of the uh, men that I've spoken with, their names are anonymous. And as a result of you know the questionnaires, I was completely surprised by their answers and what they shared. A lot of them shared a lot of intimate details about their significant others as well as things that happened to them in their childhood. Wow. Well, I, yes. I tell you. <laughs> Men are going to love this book. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you said that with such enthusiasm. I, I, like that. Men are going to love this book. When women read it, that, you know, you might have to change your, your address or something. <laughs> They're going to be after change you. Change your name. Uh, change your name. Because it's so unique, term. they can find you. <laughs> but, but I noticed, though, you are very sensitive and, and 
really presenting the men's point of view about women that that are insensitive, women that are critical, and and I mean I've heard some of these criticisms too, but in reading this would make me think that women are just horrible, and I would think why would any man get married? But I understand that men have some legitimate concerns about how women tend to be critical and never hear them when they're trying to explain that they're really doing their best. But have you had any backlash from women sure, about this? absolutely. And what are some of the things that women say to you about the well, book? Well, uh, some of the women that I've spoken to, and I, and I might add the majority of the women that I've spoken to, they um, understood exactly you know what uh, the point that I was trying to make with the book but for the women that um, basically were against the book which you know would be the backlash <laughs> um, they were not furious they were uh, unhappy because mm -hmm. they said well you know as women you know we get treated very badly I mean I've gone through relationships with men where I've got you know I've been left you know, and, and I've been, but there's you know, probably a my reason children why. have been walk, you know, walk away from me and my children and so on and so forth. And my answer to them was, well, you're not the only woman who's had some, you know, uh, challenges with men and who have been mistreated. The conversation pretty much general, it is that a lot of women as a whole do actually go through that. However, this is something different. And I just felt that there needs to be an awareness brought about how good men are basically are being treated. Not every woman is bad, as with not every man is bad. You said something in, in regards to how you know women feel in regards to the men and how they treated them and so forth, so on. Yes. But there was also, and, and and I know even with the questions, we can't be going all around the board. But mm -hmm. in your book, in chapter thirteen, it's, it was talking about. Um, it says it's her attitude. Yes. So, what would be your your take? Because a lot of times women want to blame men. Yes. But sometimes it's your behavior yes. that causes a man to want to leave or to stir in a different direction. What, what is your mind take well, on that? What I talk about as far as the attitude is concerned, you know, we have a lot of women um, that are in positions where they feel that they either don't need a man or, hmm. you know, they make more money than a man makes, so they feel that there's nobody good enough for them. Or they just simply have an attitude that they're just plain angry, when in essence, a lot of women who have these types of attitudes, there's no reason to be angry that way. That's just something that they carry with themselves. And I found that, once again, as we talked about earlier with the backlashing, a lot of those women had some very serious attitudes. They had an attitude and they just thought, you know, wow, here's a woman who's writing, you're writing on behalf of men, how dare you? Mm. Well, yeah, right, I dare. I dare to do that. And my thing is, it's not necessary for, uh, uh, if you're the type of woman that you have gone through challenges, because a lot of us women can relate to, you know, being treated uh, indifferently at some point in time. At some point in time, you, you have to let the attitude go. Because if you intend to have someone positive come into your life or just to have, just be positive and then have something good come into your life, you know, I just strongly believe that God gives us, you know, five senses. And I just believe that you should allow someone to come into your life, but you have to change. I have this saying, if you want things to change, you have to change the way you do things. Oh. Hmm. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and expect the same results. You do have to change the way you do it. And a lot of, a lot of times with um, not all women, because we do have some extraordinary women out here, yes, you know, you know yes, and, um, but a lot of times with women, they're angry and they keep carrying this thing over and over again into the next relationship and it's not fair to the next man. Right. And you know what, that's the, go ahead, Sandra, but that's, that's a very good point. But yes. go ahead on to say what you're going to say. Well, I, I just wanted to address the fact that she was, you know, I'm speaking up for you women out there, okay? Because <laughs> if, you know, if I'm just hearing, and if I'm going by what you guys are saying, and I really haven't read the book, someone that's listening out there, they would think that, you know, it sounds like you're putting this all on the woman, or the majority 
on the woman or the fault. But you and I, we had a conversation, the three of us had a conversation before the camera started, yes. and you said you did this book, you wrote this book as a form of awareness. Yes. You're not bashing anybody, you're not no. really pointing fault at anyone. That's correct. And, and actually in a relationship, like you said, it's 50-50. Yes. And there is a period of transition for not only the man, but also for the woman. Absolutely. And it's, this is what you're trying to introduce to yes. her. Yes. You know, maybe instead of constantly looking for a better man with the same attitude, yes. maybe if you change your position, your yes. attitude, do a little transitioning, then you will get this. It's just like trying to get a, a, a two magnets, you know, positive and positive, attract each other. Yes. How do you, if you're negative, how do you expect to get something positive? You're only going to draw something else negative because That's this okay. other person you're going to get is going to be as combative, argumentative, or as angry as you are, and then that relationship is not going to work. Yes, this is true. Yeah. That's you, very true. It's good well, you point. know, you you uh, you describe in several chapters the woman who's very insincere. She's got an ulterior motive. She's a game player, yeah. that sort of thing. Yeah. And we know that there are women like that. She I'm, said that, now. We didn't. We didn't well, say that. I did say <laughs> that. It's in the book. <laughs> <laughs> but we now, didn't say that. <laughs> and then there's some truth to that. But how, how would you uh -oh. say that, that your book compares to maybe some some popular books like uh, Steve Harvey's? act like a lady, think like a man, because, you know, he addresses some of that kind of thing, too, where women play the game. Yes. Um, well, first I'd like to say, you know, uh, Steve has his concept as to what he believes uh, best works for him, you mm -hmm. know, as with his audience, as well as I have with mine. Um, my book basically talks about good men being um, put in put in compromising situations, whereas they um, within these compromising situations are put in positions where they have to be exposed to various forms of manipulations. See, I don't, I don't, I don't believe that as a woman you need to do all of this manipulating in order to get what you want. Now you don't think they, I know, well, all of them, don't you think in the beginning, because I mean, we're grown sure, women. Sure. We've all been out here, we've been, this ain't our first, second, third, fifth, or 25th right. rodeo. Absolutely. That there's a, <laughs> stop laughing, Jean. Yes. That there is a little game playing early on in a relationship, pretty much in every relationship. Yes. Well, here's what I believe. Awesome. I believe, for most. Well, for, well, I was just going to say, <laughs> yeah, for, for, for some Not of for the successful ones. I think. A lot of, Every woman is not like that. I'm That's saying men too. Right. And yeah. What, what yeah. I'm saying. But okay. see, but this, but my book is different. That's where it differs from a lot of others because I don't talk about the manipulation of the man because remember, we have this society uh, that that puts men in a category where they're constantly being male bashed, but there's a whole nother group of men who nobody recognizes, and that's. The men who are actually good men. There are still some good men out here, as well as good women. And having said that, all in the same, we not only have that, but we have good women who are with men who have been deceived by other women, making it difficult for these men to actually open up. So mm -hmm. it's not necessarily about the gang. In, in that in that particular instance, it's not about the gang plan. It is about what's right versus what's wrong. You, as an adult, you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Most of the men that I've actually spoken to, let me tell you, and you might find this hard to believe, but the majority of the men that I've spoken to, what they were saying to me, I said, what does it take for you to basically do for a woman, you know, to accept a woman and do for her? And they said, you know what, Dee, if we can just get a woman just to simply respect us, hmm. show some acknowledgement and appreciation, the rest, the rest comes easy. Now, did they give any kind of descriptions as to what, the, what you know, because respect means different things to different people. Sure, absolutely. And so, and so, so much too for acknowledgement. Yes. You know, some people, I agree, some people you need to praise them for everything they do, or they like to feel needed and wanted. And I do know men, no man was going to be anywhere where he feels that he isn't needed. Yes. And I think that's a huge mistake that a lot of women make, yes. who, angry or not. Saying, I don't need no man. Well, yeah, again, okay, right, they well, want, they want to feel needed, right. Yes. So when they say respect, 
is there something with anyone that's listening right now that you could say look at this because this is the area yes. or this was something they felt where women did not respect one this was the the common answer the common response yes what i would say would be with the if you have a man say for instance he let's just use employment as an example and let's just say your man once upon a time had a very good job you know what we would consider a good job and where he made you know a, a very good salary and at some point in time he lost that and he had to go and work and do something a lot less with less pay and I think um, I would say be mindful that first of all it's a total shock to him yeah don't be disrespectful to him and say to him you know what well you know if you if you'd get out and go find something better we could have this or we could have that I was in the grocery store once and there was a gentleman um, this this couple they were in line and you know how do you have like the candy bars and things like that this man proceeded to pull a candy bar this woman says to him I don't know what you're doing that for when you can bring some money into the house then you can get that oh you know that was what? a put down that, that, that really like, was yeah that was a real low blow, blow. I, can, <laughs> I, can, I can but women do that yes, yes they do yes. I can actually speak on behalf of something of that nature yes. why because my husband who's the breadwinner yes. and and this is a, a, a scenario a real life situation my husband got hurt on the job and for seven months we went with no income they they denied him uh, in regards to his workman's comp but never not one time did I ever look at him or tell him, well, you know, I mean, because you heard you need to go do something, what are we going to do? Never degraded him. But if nothing else, I still made sure my husband uh, was, was fed. I still made yes. sure everything that was needed to be done was done. And, and he even felt when like he had all kinds of ways to make soup. And, 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 and the thing about it was, there was a time when he fell into a depression because he made the statement. He said, here it is, now I feel as though I have someone who is worthy of my of what I'm able to do for them and now I can't do anything that was not by choice yes. you got hurt yes you then you uh, after a while they terminated you yes. from the job so does that make him less of a man should I beat him down or bash him he's already feeling bad and then I'm gonna turn around and beat him down even more so no I'm going to encourage you yes. because I know what God has given me yes. and you are a good man and in due time we'll do what we need to do and, and then it became to that point I even asked my husband because that's when our ministry started mm -hmm. do you want me hon, to go head on and and find something you know to contribute to it he said no we'll be about our father's business so you know I, I say to women who who gives you the right especially when this man was taking care of doing and and providing in the manner of what gives you the right to just tear him down yes. even more so after him having to experience what he has to experience that is a perfect example everything that you said I, I it's extraordinary to me because it is so important in, in, an, in an instance such as that that you do exactly as that women a woman should do exactly what you've done you nurtured him you kept feeding him positive you kept telling him in, in other words you're saying to him I respect you because I know that you want to do this and you were at some point in time a provider I didn't look at you as anything less I didn't make you feel anything less as a matter of fact I made you feel even stronger because as your wife this is what I need to do for you because if I do this for you this will be helpful to all of us and that is the right thing to do and a lot of women we still we have women out here that are good women that do that once again we have other groups of women no matter what he does it's not enough, it's not enough. that what you did for there is a prime example of what women should take note of and they should actually do that so are you hoping that with this book women will see themselves because this is presented from a man's point of view in terms of what he feels when a woman puts him down or yes. doesn't appreciate when he's going through hard times yes. so you're hoping a woman might get past her defensiveness and say oh wow I have done that yes. and then realize what it looks like to a man 
And I believe there's, of course, one chapter where it, it kind of shows how a man goes through the process of ending up in another relationship because his yeah. wife doesn't appreciate him and he finds this other woman who does. And then exactly. so you can really see from the man's point of view how he can end up somewhere else because he needs That's that nurturing right. from somewhere. This is very true. I also, I had um, a woman who purchased the book. She actually called me mm. and told me that she apologized to her husband ah. because she did not realize that by her saying, you know, all I expect you to do is to take care of my needs mm. or it's about money, money, money. Yeah. You know, and she explained me, to me, me that, me. Mm -hmm. you know, she and her husband, they have six children. Mm -hmm. And she said, you know what, I'm so glad you wrote this book because I actually saw myself in this mm -hmm. book. She apologized to her husband. Not only did she do that, she actually put her husband on the phone so I could talk with him. Oh. <laughs> and he said, he said, Miss Turner, thank you so much for writing this book. He said, because you saved my with marriage. what you've done, that's exactly what he said. You saved my marriage. And um, so you're right, because it, it's important for us to get back to having in family partnerships, you mm, know, yeah. as opposed to. Uh, one individual going this way and one individual going that way. All I'm saying is simply is that it's just more to just one side of, you know, individuals being mistreated. And we do have men out here that are being mistreated. Now, are you also hoping that women who complain about being left by men or done wrong by men, that they may see some of the things that they did to possibly contribute to that? I hope so. I hope that there will be, um, it will bring about a personal awareness too. Um, women who have actually, you know, gone through that or who have actually exercised, you know, something of that nature, absolutely. I, I also look at it to uh, a point, and again, as I said in the beginning, I was just so ecstatic when, you know, it was shared in regards to this particular book, you know, and I look at it even when it comes to women like Mother's Day, Father's Day. Mother's Day is a, it's a big hype, you know. We're just, oh, Mother's Day, Mother's Day. And my mother was the greatest, my, my mother this, that, and the other. But when it comes to Father's Day, you know, it's, it's like, Down uh, who in the world really cares about their dad, you know. Yeah. But there are men who have raised families yes. by themselves by to a point of doing the hair and making sure this is done. And you even, um, as I'm thinking about that, you even had that mentioned in your book. Yes. So the men are, are, are out there and they're doing, but a lot of them who are not active in the children's lives are because of women, which goes back to the attitude. Yeah. Because he's not doing it the way you want him to do it in a timely fashion, you want him to do it, he ain't paying what you feel he should, right. then you eliminate you them. them and now mm -hmm. men are just <laughs> always looked at, down at yeah. as the worst thing to walk the face of God's green eyes. Yeah, it's well, like but I just agree that the men should get off because of that. Uh, one thing, I wouldn't care whether you're paying uh, and I don't care what else is going on, you still need to fight and make sure you're in that, one, that, that. child's yes. life. Many of them walk away without fighting and again throw their hands up or say, you know, well, she's getting a check, that's it. And now you have a young woman who will probably grow up not trusting any man yes. and have that anger for the rest of her life because of guess what? That father let her down. Now going back to the Mother's Day stuff, let me tell you something. I loved my daddy. I was very fortunate. I had a, a, a daddy, a stepfather, a wonderful stepfather for 24 years. I had both of my grandfathers I knew. I had all of that, one of them weird relationships. And I loved them really much. But you know, when it came to my mom, my mother's, uh, yeah, because I, I actually, in the big scheme of things, even in a so-called good relationship, women still put more into a relationship and do more than men do. It's a fact. I think that's a Because the fact, wait, no, to have the children, no, stop, wait. But that's a perception. The person to carry a child for nine months, the first man that does it, I will go out and I will do something special for you. But well, on we, Father's Day. But, we, but, we, but we that's, and I think that's the thing that makes a difference in the day, the celebration. It isn't so much because, and I wouldn't say, that you that you they love or dislike their fathers for the same reason that we're having with this relationship thing. Mm -hmm. It's that when you realize, especially with women, 
And sometimes even with men who can think about it, the fact that you've gone nine months to carry the baby, doesn't matter if the father contributed to it. It doesn't even matter well, about that. But the father might say he spent nine years taking care of the child exactly. and, and so worked two jobs and so, so forth so while she stayed at home. <laughs> so it's so always your perspective. Mama, that, that if, if, if you don't mind, let, let, let's go back to what you talked about with the man fighting uh, for his children. And we'll go back to the Mother's Day and Father's Day thing. Sometimes the system, hmm. there are some of us who uh, have worked in the system. And sometimes the system doesn't always favor the man. I've seen right. men who have done everything that they could do to the point where they've nearly lost everything, if not lost everything, to only be getting a slap in the face by the system. So it's not necessarily if, if, if a man, if he's not trying. A lot of times we do have men out here that are actually trying. I've seen them walk out of courtrooms with tears in their eyes because they, they're, they don't have enough money to fight for their children, and they love their children. And we have these women who hold these things against them and hold it over their head, whereas in the judicial system, not every judge, but we do have some judges that will favor the woman and will not give these men a chance. Well, the law, I don't know, the state of Illinois, and I know at least 40 other states, do require that if the father is paying child support, he automatically has a right to visit. She cannot do anything, and they will issue a stay on her. They will penalize the mom. They will bring in court people to make sure that that visitation takes place. It's easier and said it, than and done, though. You well, know, I mean, let's be realistic about it. I got some, I got some cousins. It wasn't that hard. I've got family too. And so, it, but it's up to it's up to them well. to fight and, and inform the judge and the system that she's not allowing me to see my kids. Well, yeah. I've got a question though. Yes. If a man loses a job. So as you said, your husband would do a challenge. Does that make him then ineligible to see his children? No. And Nor this is what a lot of women do, though. Nor does being able to pay child support either. But, and, and again, but anybody that knows that, do, they though. still have to come up and make up some kind of term. And again, they can easily go before the judge, going before the judge and requesting the, the judge to say, I need to either get a decrease, increase in my uh, responsibilities or put it suspended because I'm unemployed. Plus, unemployment does give you credit for right. if you have children. Sometimes you don't have sometimes unemployment. Well, again, if you, right. again, I mean, sometimes that's, you don't have that's a whole nother But topic. are you still a man right. even though you don't have money? You're, right. sti you're still a man and that's why they have to do it. Okay. <laughs> you're watching <laughs> woman to woman as usual. We, we, we just go, we run away with it. I want you to join us on www.ectv.com streaming. We're, uh, our show is available Mondays and Fridays at 4 p.m. For those of you who don't want to join us on uh, the internet, you can lo contact your local cable company and they will let you know. But for those who know, we are ECTV, Channel 6 in Evanston. You know what? We have run out of time. Oh my goodness. We didn't get a chance to talk about Mother's Day, Father's Day again. That's all right. We got to pick that up another we gonna, time. We can talk about this on our way home. Okay. We will <laughs> drive. It, but we, we're, we're gonna get this out. Yes. Uh, what I want to do is that I want to allow each one of my co-hosts to uh, make a comment about the book. Because this, I mean, this definitely is a book for a must read. This is a yes, must read, is. if no more than for the awareness <clears throat> and education. Yeah. And then I want a short, brief closing uh, comment from our guest. And I'm gonna start Jean this With time. me, okay. Yes. All right. I, I would just say thank you. Uh, it, get the book, read the book. It, it's, it's exciting. I've only had a chance to go through the chapters and read a little bit, but I'm looking forward to reading the entire book. But what I have read, it is awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Naima. I would say, men, get this book for your wives. <laughs> she said everything you've been trying to say and, and wouldn't <laughs> understand. <laughs> so she did your job. Get the book. Give it as a gift. Uh, okay. DiCarlo yes, Turner. Yes. I'd like to say thank you to everyone who has supported my book and to the ladies here in the panel. I've had an enjoyous time here with you. I appreciate your comments and also, and I thank you for your support. Um, I would say to everyone watching this program, please, you can find my book at Amazon.com and also at BarnesandNoble.com. If you'd like to send me an email, you can email me at info at the forgotten man by DiCarloTurner.com. Thank you for your support and I appreciate it. 
Well, thank you very much. My name is Sandra Campbell. Thank you for watching Woman to Woman, and we'll see you soon. Woo! <laughs>